multiple sclerosis after the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. I want to show you a case report of a Japanese woman who was diagnosed with MS shortly after receiving the second dose of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. And I'll talk a little bit about this case and my own experiences. So multiple sclerosis is a reasonably common disease in the United States. About one in 350 people have it. But in Japan, it's significantly more rare. And this actually is likely genetic. Asian people in general General, regardless of where they live, including the U.S., seem to have a lower risk of MS. And this is the first such case after the vaccine that was reported. And so that's why it's sort of notable. And I'll talk about how we know about rare side effects of vaccine and comment about it. But first, let's just take a look at the case in general. So they talk a little bit about the background and other reported cases with other vaccines. So this is a 40-year-old woman, and she presented to, to, to Hoku Medical and Pharmaceutical University with symptoms of numbness in her right hand that gradually ascended to her right shoulder over one week. She had received the second dose of the Pfizer vaccines two weeks prior to the onset of symptoms. So typically, immune-mediated side effects of vaccines occur between one month and, excuse me, one week and two months after the onset, either a vaccine or a viral infection. And it's known that transverse myelitis can occur after vaccines and after viral infections in general. And she did have some symptoms, some side effects with the second dose, including fever, which is just a typical side effect of these vaccines. And she also was healthy, but she had one interesting thing in her past medical history. So four years ago, she had left peripheral facial nerve palsy. So this is most likely Bell's palsy, which is a motor disorder of the facial nerve. And it's actually a peripheral nervous system disorder, although some epidemiologic studies suggest that it may be associated with multiple multiple sclerosis. In some cases, multiple sclerosis can cause brainstem lesions in the pons that it can affect the facial motor nucleus mimicking Bell's palsy, although people usually have slightly different symptoms. For instance, taste is not involved. So it is possible to clinically tell the difference between Bell's palsy and peripheral facial nerve palsy related to multiple sclerosis. As an aside, I actually had Bell's palsy myself at age 18 years old. So she was treated with steroids and recovered. She's otherwise healthy. So when she came into the hospital, she was found on exam to have numbness in the area that she indicated, and she had abnormal MRI scans, which I'll show you in a moment, and the key finding was transverse cervical myelitis. So she had a spinal tap, and she had oligoclonal bands, which is a finding seen in people with multiple sclerosis. Although it is nonspecific, you can also see this finding in people with transverse myelitis due to another cause, even uniphasic transverse myelitis due to a vaccine or due to a viral infection. They tested her for very various other conditions which could cause transverse myelitis, but they were all normal, including tests for neuromyelitis optica. So they concluded that she had multiple sclerosis. They gave her high dose steroids, methylprednisolone, 1000 milligrams for three days, and she completely recovered and she is doing great, which is wonderful. So here are her MRI scans. This is the MRI scan of her brain, which shows three lesions. One lesion is in the left anterior periventricular subcortical white matter, and a few small lesions in the subcortical front lobe white matter bilaterally. Now, one comment on these MRI scans is these lesions, although they could be consistent with multiple sclerosis, they're a little bit nonspecific. So if I saw this patient, I would say, I'm not sure about those lesions. They may be chronic. Classic multiple sclerosis lesions are in the periventricular area touching the ventricles, not like this lesion. They can be juxtacortical immediately under the cortex in the chloropus chlorosum or brainstem. So these lesions are a little bit nonspecific, and I'm not sure the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis is accurate, which I think the authors knew, as I'll show in a moment. So this could be just transverse myelitis with the lesions in the brain <coughs> being unrelated to her condition. Interestingly, she did not have a lesion in the pons, suggesting the prior facial nerve paralysis probably was Bell's palsy. Now, more importantly, this is the MRI of her spine, and you can see at the C6 level, there is a T2 bright lesion, and it does take on the gadolinium contrast dye and its posterior and location, explaining her sensory loss. This lesion actually does look typical of multiple sclerosis, though it could also be seen in transverse myelitis related to a viral illness or vaccine or due to another cause. They talk about her MRIs a little bit. So then they go on in the discussion to talk about other reports of similar signs side effects after vaccine. So they're talking about transverse myelitis. So they say, for instance, in the United Kingdom, there have been 17 cases after the Pfizer vaccine. 
and 45 cases after the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, if you remember previously, this was a huge concern with the AstraZeneca vaccine, and I was actually telling my patients not to receive it, although it never actually became approved in the United States, so it's never really an issue. In Germany, there was one case after the Pfizer vaccine and two cases after the AstraZeneca vaccine. In the United States, there were nine cases uh, without mentioning a specific vaccine. I don't think these data are accurate. This isn't the full VAERS data. So in terms of my own experience, I have one patient who developed transverse myelitis within two months after receiving one of the mRNA COVID-19 vaccines, and it was quite severe. And this individual did not have multiple sclerosis, and I did, in fact, report it to VAERS. To my knowledge, the VAERS database has not come out and said that there is an association between transverse myelitis or multiple sclerosis and any of the COVID-19 vaccines that are approved in the United States. So these databases have reported various other side effects, Guillain-Barre syndrome after the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, particularly in older men, uh, myocarditis, pericarditis, inflammation around the heart, particularly in younger men and teenage boys, and other side effects, but they really have not come out and said that there is an association. Now, in general, it's a little bit more difficult than people think to actually determine what the rare side effects of a vaccine are. So the common side effects like fever and site reactions and anaphylaxis, those are pretty easy to determine just from clinical trials. But if you have a side effect that's very rare, like one in 10,000, it's really, really difficult to determine that. And we can't really determine it from randomized studies. We have to use observational data. So it's very important for doctors, healthcare providers, and even people with the condition to report to VAERS. And that's why I reported the cases. I actually also reported two cases of facial nerve palsy to VAERS as well. Although that also, despite initial concerns is not clearly linked to any of these vaccines. So one thing I would note is that diseases like transverse myelitis and multiple sclerosis are really common. You know, so something like 60% of the U.S. population has received a COVID-19 vaccine. So that's 330 million people times 60%. So even if there was no association whatsoever between these vaccines and transverse myelitis or multiple sclerosis, you know, we're going to see a lot of people get these diseases just because there's a pretty significant background rate of these diseases. We would expect to see thousands of cases of these diseases. Now, I'm a neuroimmunology specialist in a large medical group, Southern California Kaiser Permanente Medical Group, and I we have a catchment area of 5 million people. I diagnose transverse myelitis and multiple sclerosis all the time. I have not seen any particular rise in these diagnoses as far as I can tell, although I'm not specifically doing a detailed statistical analysis. We do keep data on that, but it probably would not be published until later, maybe sometime next in 2022. But I haven't seen any kind of rush of any particular neurological disease. I do think there's an increase in headache and migraine this year, although that may also be due to stress and sleep deprivation and other things that are going on in our society in general. So it's very unclear if this is related to the vaccine. And the authors do say that. And they say at the very end, they believe the benefit of vaccination against SARS-CoV-2 far outweighs the potential risk. But it is definitely something to keep an eye on. I do agree with their conclusion at the end of the article. The carnage that I've seen from COVID-19 greatly outweighs any potential side effect I've seen from COVID-19 vaccines. And so I'd certainly encourage everyone to get vaccinated and not be afraid. What about people who have had these diseases before, like transverse myelitis or multiple sclerosis? Well, there is a case series on the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for people with multiple sclerosis, and they found and they mentioned in this article that the rate of relapses was approximately 2%, which is similar to the background rate of relapses in a period without vaccination. So the observational data suggests that these vaccines do not seem to increase the rate of relapses. So I don't know that this is making people more nervous or less nervous. Certainly, we need to keep an eye on this data. And if you have any other questions, please post in the comments below.